Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. Today is day two, Rookie to Pro, Eight Steps to Becoming a Real Estate Rockstar. And as we were uh, sharing with you yesterday on part one, this is part two, make sure you understand that this is not a podcast that is directed primarily towards new agents. I know Rookie to Pro maybe sounds like it is, but it isn't. This is your opportunity to uh, take a breath, your opportunity to do a little be honest and maybe go back, well, most certainly go back and polish off the skill set um, that many of you didn't really have to develop because the previous market, because of all the FOMO, was making it so homes were selling, you know, more or less by themselves because there was so much demand and buyers were buying because of, you know, fear of missing out on their part and the low interest rates. And all that's changed and you are all experiencing that more than ever, this has become a skills based market. The only time, Julie, uh, I can think of in our past, you know, 27 years in real estate that it has been this much of a sea change from you know, let's just be honest, FOMO to skills was definitely after the housing crash. Definitely. That was a major shift. It was. I remember when you and I did our first short sale training event, it was, was that in 07 or 08? I think it was late 07, wasn't it? I think you're right. Yeah. And we had uh, something like six or 700 agents. It was on a webinar, right? And something like, you know, the biggest question, and Julie and I were just rusty and we'd never really done webinars before. Uh, so we're OG webinar, and we we're going through the presentation of the material, the whole thing, answering questions. But what we didn't, well, I forgot to answer questions is where, I, where I'm going with this. And I finally looked at all the questions, and um, the question that we were getting about a thousand times was, what's a short sale? <laughs> what in the world is a short sale? And looking back to those times, things shifted very quickly right. back then. I think you'll recall we went from an environment where there were multiple offers, things would sell right away. And then it changed on them and they had to upgrade their skills. So the moral of the story was, is that we, uh, you know, the agents that were on that webinar that were learning to, you know, do short sales, they're the ones that went off to dominate their market because most of the markets were full of opportunities to list homes because the sellers were upside down or near upside down. Uh, And so those agents, a lot of those agents became the dominant agents in their marketplaces and still are to this day. Why? Because while other agents were hiding, you know, waiting for the clouds to clear, these agents were out there learning how to help people using the skills that were necessary in that market, which were short sales. And in this market, guess what? A lot of new skills are necessary. Um, And then that is what we're doing our best to explain to all of you on this podcast. So we're moving on to day two, and this is point number four. But before I get to point number four, I want to remind all of you, many of you want our notes, and I appreciate that. So go to harrisrealestatedaily.com and subscribe. harrisrealestatedaily.com is our daily newsletter where all of our notes and a lot of other unique content just for the newsletter is... um, you know, it's there. So harrisrealestatedaily.com is a free subscription, let's be clear, and you can subscribe below when the show description from today, or just go to harrisrealestatedaily.com. It is absolutely something that all of you guys should be doing because really it doesn't cost you anything and you get more of a drill down um, approach to a lot of the podcasts that we're doing, which so many of you love and listen to every day. Oh, and by the way, thanks for all the new five-star review reviews over on iTunes. We always appreciate that. Mrs. Harris, point number four. Yes, this is part two, day two of Rookie to Pro, eight steps to become a real estate rock star. Whether you are an actual rookie or you are hitting the hard reset, these points apply to all of you. Point number four, be relentlessly proactive in generating new leads daily. Talk with both people who already know you, that's your database of past clients, centers of influence, as well as people who don't already know you, which is basically everyone else. And hold yourself accountable, or have your coach do it, to at least five contacts daily with people from your database. Get started on that. Those are the easier calls they already know, love, and trust you. Get scripts of what to say and how to say it from your premier coaching coach. But this is a great place to break the ice before you talk to people you don't know. Now, before you get to your next point, because I'm reading ahead today, so I don't use any of your points. Okay, there's more to point number four, but that's Right, I know, but just as far as point number four, we're going to talk about expireds here in a second, Mm -hmm. as far as lead generation. The fact is, in a market like this, you have to generate probably, and we can debate this if you want to, but I bet you if before you had 
you know, 10 leads, let's say before maybe the last two or three years, you had 10 leads, you could pretty much bank on maybe four or five of them transacting. Now I bet you the ratio to leads, even qualified leads, you know, especially qualified leads to closings is probably more like 15 to maybe one or two. I would agree with that. I can tell you from my own coaching experience with my one-on-one elite clients, the ones I talk to, you know, every week, take for example, somebody like Patrick Murphy in Columbus, Ohio. He typically has eight to 10 pendings going at all times. So he's doing a lot of transactions. So how many quote leads, now we're not talking about contacts or just random people in your database. How many leads, people he's talking to, who he's actively pre-qualifying, does he have in his pipeline to create eight to 10 pendings at all times? It's usually between 20 and 30. It's not 300 or 400, it's 20 to 30, but he's actively communicating with them. So I want you to think about what we said. Back when the housing market was, you know, booming, that your ratio of leads, let's just be honest, marginally qualified leads uh, to closings was probably more like maybe, like if you had five leads, you could pretty much bank on three or four of those, those were gonna be closings. And now the ratio is so much pushed out, not because the buyers or the sellers aren't motivated and qualified, but because of all the other headwinds a lot of people are experiencing right now. So you're going to have to wrap your mind around more lead generation. And you're also going to have to live with the reality that the lead generation that many of you have been relying on, which is bot leads, buying buyer leads primarily, that business model really is going to have a lot of issues uh, in the second half of this year into the following year, simply for the fact that Frankly, a lot of those lead selling platforms aren't able to generate the leads in order for them to keep up their margins. They're going to increase the referral fees or just the flat fee that they're charging you for leads. We have heard, frankly, from about the best source possible that Zillow is now testing, charging 50% referral fees on their Zillow Flex leads. So I want you to really wrap your mind around that. If you're working at a broker where you have an 80-20 split, and you're, you know, so you're paying 20% to your broker, and now you're paying 50% to Zillow. And if you're part of a team, which that's frankly where a lot of the Zillow Flex leads are being sent to teams, that agent is going to be working for peanuts, and the person running the team is making no money. That is the nature of being dependent on a source for buying leads. So learn how to be a proactive lead generator. Absolutely, positively wrap your mind around that. And um, where I, my mind is really going is I'm looking at some of your points. Maybe sure. you don't even have to talk about them now. Uh, I was looking at the sales stats for Austin. Yes. And you and I follow Austin because we have rental mm-hmm. properties there. And then Austin's one of the markets where there is essentially the biggest market adjustment that's happening in the country. For sure. I study fact, that I think, every day. I think it was number one. I think between it's between Austin and uh, parts of Florida, for sure. All right. So the headline is, you know, price reductions, all these mm-hmm. other things, more listings. Those, and it's, in the, I'd say the novice agent and certainly the novice news reporter is going to see that as bad news. I see that as the best news ever. For one, you're going to have a lot more opportunity to get your buyers into contract. But I'll tell you where my mind went is expired listings. There are going to be so many opportunities for you guys, you know, in Austin, we're really in a lot of other parts of the country too, to finally become powerful listing agents. Remember I was telling you after the short sale or when the short sale train was starting to leave the station, all those agents that had never before probably listed a home because they were equipped with the skill set that they learned from our short sale program, they were able to go out uh, and essentially be able to list properties where other agents who didn't have the skill set didn't know how. That same opportunity is here now in many markets with expired listings. It's extraordinary. That's true. And let me just clarify, the reason that we bring up the housing crash is not because we think there's going to be a housing crash. You're going to wake up and every seller you know is going to be upside down and underwater and you have to learn short sales scenarios. That's not why we bring it up. We bring it up as an example of a major market shift where the agents who embraced what the market was willing to give them at that point in time, it was short sales and REOs, those were the agents who didn't just survive those very scary times that most of you didn't uh, transact in, but they went on to be the new kings and queens of the real estate market because they were willing to shift their skills. So now, as Tim points out, in Austin, for example, and other parts of Texas as well, I mean, if you're a Texas agent and you're not going after expireds, I don't know what you're thinking because there's plenty of them to go around. Let's go to point- That's an example of a shift. Let's go to point number five, because we really do talk a lot about lead generation in this podcast every yeah. single day, and it's a major part of our uh, coaching program. Here's the real bottom line. You're going to have to increase the amount of leads you have. You're going to have to be really, really effective at high, very high level pre-qualification. So you're only working with the leads 
on the seller side, especially that absolutely positively have to sell. The one of sells of pigs fly kind of pricing is not going to fly in this market in many markets. You're going to want to work with the, you know, all that. Learn how to really pre-qualify at the highest level and don't waste your time with people that as soon as the tides turn or the wind starts blowing in a different direction or there's some political headwind that they just decide to, oh, we're just going to stay renting or we're going to stay in the house we have. You're going to have to be really good at being honest with yourself uh, about the quality of the leads that you're chasing. Otherwise, you're going to have a roster full or a list full of un people that will never transact. And then internally, that's going to grind at you because you're not going to be making any money uh, it, because you've been spending all your time with these looky-loo types who weren't really truly motivated. Again, this is all skills-based. Remember I told you, in this new market, it's the agents that are, have the skills that are going to dominate the marketplace. You're going to have to look for buyers, not just the buyers that want to buy houses, but buyers that have the mindset and frankly, the fortitude to purchase, to transact, and that are going to be willing to commit to you contractually, you know, because of the new buyer agency uh, law that's in are going to be in place soon. All of these things, that's what we teach you in Premier Coaching. Remember when we said the agents that were dominant in the past market aren't necessarily the ones that are going to be dominant in the new market? Can you guys see that the bridge to go from the old market to the new market is all based on skills? It's not based on branding. It's not based on marketing. You can have the best marketing and branding forever. And let's say you get a lot of, you know, folks that are interested in what you have to offer. You're, you know, advertising houses that are going to appeal to a certain price range. First time buyers, those fo your phone's always going to ring. Well, if you don't know actually how to qualify those people at a high level, if you're just assuming that, you know, you're using the skill uh, sales, skill set you had back in, the, back in the past market or FOMO was going to get that buyer to actually cross into the end zone. That's not going to work now. You're going to have to take everything to the next level. Don't wait to essentially be pushed down on the mat. Don't wait to fail to learn what we're saying is true. Migrate your mind to the acceptance that in a market like this gives you an opportunity to hit hard reset, load in new software, and then go faster to the next level in your business, your personal business life. And that requires that you get more serious about your proactive lead generation. To summarize point number four and everything that we've laid out for you, you need more leads than you think, possibly by 3x. You need to be speaking with more than just your database because the FOMO of the previous years robbed the future deals from what we're dealing with now. Half your database refinanced and doesn't plan on moving. That's different than the years that you've survived from your database before. That's why you have to expand and also talk to other sources. And just for the record, the last market, if I know, again, don't, Julie got this right, but don't conflate with us giving an example of thinking the housing market's going to crash. It's absolutely not. But if you want to compare this market to that 2007, 2008, and, and really most of 2009 market, that market was a thousand times harder than this. A there, thousand times there's, harder. There's no doubt. That market was a freaking unbelievably tough market compared to now. Uh, you know, And we can give you examples, but just trust me on that point. This market is gravy compared to that past market. There's no comparison. Yeah. if I When I'm thinking about it, I, I compare it as follows. That market was really hard on sellers and homeowners. This market, because there's fewer sales and fewer FOMO buyers, is a bit harder on agents. That's right. That's 100% right. Because most sellers, most owners rather, are sitting on 50% equity. You know, even if they bought last year and they maybe took an interest rate that they didn't want to take out and they're waiting for rates to fall so they can refinance, guess what? Their house probably has increased in value by at least 6% since they've owned the home. Yeah, so, and so what if they have to reduce it by 5% to get it in contract? Who exactly. cares, right? <laughs> okay, very different. All right, now point number five, actively expand your personal and business centers of influence. Why? 10% of your database will transact or refer somebody to you each year, assuming that you're following the previous points and actually speaking with a minimum of five people daily from your list. Speaking with, speaking with, keyword, not mailing, not emailing, not tchotchke dropping, not all these other things. It's calling them and having conversations is the secret sauce to this market. Remember, skills-based. Do not do not do the high-level contacts passively. You will not get the business because your ten, the 10% 10 in your database that will transact this year, guess what? They're in 100 other agents' databases. 
the, That's right. Those are not exclusively your centers of influence and past clients. Other agents are working them. So if you're laboriously dropping off this and forget me not seeds and you know pumpkin pies in October and whatever, all these other things, but there's an agent who's calling and having meaningful conversations and bringing value to that prospective seller, and they're doing it like we prescribe, which is on a monthly basis, guess who's going to get the opportunity first and probably take that listing? The one that's actually done the work and formed the better relationship. That's right. The existence of your database by itself will not create the minimum of 10% of people transacting with you. The things that Tim talked about, we know you're going to do them anyway. You're going to drop things off. You're going to do pop buys. You're going to do a digital newsletter. You're going to do all that kind of stuff and post on social media. All of those things work 5,000 times better when you have real conversations. And if you don't want to spend the money and take the time to do the passive stuff, just make the calls. 100%. Just, if you, you're thinking, well, I'm going to do the passive stuff because, you know, so-and-so said this is all they did and they just, you know, you did all this, you know, past client parties and all these other things. All these things cost money. We don't want you guys spending money unnecessarily ever, but especially now. Stop wasting your money on things that don't directly result in a transaction. I know that's heartbreaking for some of you because you've been doing postcard campaigns and doing all these other little you know, free giveaway things forever. Well, you need to consider the cost, the accumulative cost of all those things and realize that those things may have worked in the past market. They may have been expected maybe in some markets um, in a previous market, but now a caring, competent, professional real estate agent calling people and giving them a, a, you know, a market snapshot like we teach you in Premier Coaching with our scripts and letting folks know what's actually happening in the market, delivering value in a very personal, you know, one-on-one -on -one direct call way. That is the agent that will start dominating the market. You cannot logically in your brains tell me that you don't agree with what I just said. You making a call to somebody is less efficient from a time uh, usage perspective. Yes, that's true. But it's a thousand times more uh, efficient than mailing them a bunch of newsletters or postcards or tchotchkes. Now, if you're still married to the idea that you want to do the passive stuff in any sort of you know realm, whether it be centers of influence and past clients or lead generation, and you're not ready to break up with it, well, guess what? You keep doing it, but do the damn phone calls because that's what's going to make the difference. And as our coaching clients who actually do this point report, you'll be amazed at how excited people are to hear from you. You're calling them with good news. Well, 99% <laughs> of the time you're calling a seller yeah. and telling them that they have a whole bunch of, you know, a monster pile of equity and they're going to be very thrilled to hear from you. Looking forward to your call next week, Bob, yeah. or next month, Bob, same time. Yeah. And you know what has melted away that we used to talk about more is the fear that agents had of telling people, hey, Tim, I got good news. Your house is now worth over a million dollars. Agents used to live in fear of, of that seller saying, well, that's great. And I would move. I would list with you today. But where am I going to move? Well, inventory is on the rise in many places. And so that objection is melting away. I've had many of them say, oh, I, I had no idea. Are you sure? Can you show me some comps? They look at the comps, they decide to sell, or they look at the comps and if they've got a super low rate, they decide to keep the house and then move. One of the common things I hear from coaching clients, which surprised me, but makes sense. It won't, the keeping house scenario won't happen for, you know, 90% of the transactions out there because they frankly, need the equity. They won't qualify for both, even with the first one having a low interest rate. So don't get your mind stuck that people are somehow locked in because of interest rates. That's not true. More inventory and probably slightly lower rates, a half point less and more inventory, you're going to see the return of the housing boom. And as we started predicting at the beginning of this year, we still are confident that's going to start happening towards the end of this year for a whole bunch of reasons from a macroeconomic perspective. It, frankly, there's a lot of dominoes that are going to fall unless interest rates uh, start to fall. And, uh, you know, I guarantee you the politicians are going to make it so that interest rates are going to start to, uh, you know, be into the fives and re for residential housing probably within the next six to seven months. In it, the only reason that wouldn't happen is if there was a huge increase in inflation. But other than that, there's definitely going to be a decrease in interest rate. There already is a increase in inventory. So be ready. Very well said. All right. Number six, educate yourself daily and polish your skills by listening to this podcast, obviously, as you are now, but also listen to Housing Wire Daily, New Home Insights podcast that keeps you in touch with uh, new construction, Sales Gravy, which is all about prospecting. Our friend Jeb Blunt runs that and other content rich skill building podcasts. How many people have emailed us? We were so appreciative when you guys say, I can't believe what I did one thing from one podcast, like yesterday's example with taking a for sale by owner. Yeah. I did one thing. So if you do just one thing from each podcast, imagine what you'll get from coaching. But the point number six is to educate yourself daily. Don't just educate yourself when your CE credit comes due. Actively upgrade your skills. 
This also means limiting or elim limiting or eliminating altogether your exposure to negative media sources. Be media free except for your own curated collection of newsletters, podcasts, and books. Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, most of you know about that. Napoleon Hill talks about having a mastermind. He states that this can be people, alive or dead, and it can be through books, conversations, and clubs. And if there were podcasts during Napoleon's time, I'm sure he would be a fan. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, podcasts are the greatest uh, thing that happened in mass media obviously we have a dog in the fight but um the reality of it is is everything else pretty much is gone through is run through filters that are partisan yes. and even in the real estate space and I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a little you know, you know i'm gonna get on a little soapbox here so you will notice that julie and i are not big advocates of you guys spending a lot of money period we aren't and you know premier coaching is free for the first 30 days. Most of the prospecting that we show you guys how to do, the lead generation we show you how to do, it doesn't cost you anything. Why? Because we want you to run businesses uh, that are profit-based. We want you to know that your product of your real estate business, any business, by the way, is profit. No profit, you're either intentionally running a nonprofit business, unintentionally running a nonprofit business. Either way, you're without profit, not going to stay in business. So the moral of the story is when you're actually thinking about, you know, what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be spending your time, who you're going to be listening to, make sure you're listening to people that are in tune with what your goals are, in alignment with what your expectations are, in alignment with, frankly, the person that you want to become. Do a real constant, you know, proactive job of weeding out anything that's negative. Really just focus on how do you feel after you've consumed content. And if you feel uplifted and you feel motivated, well, that's probably more of what you should be intaking. If not, you need to purge it from your life because the cumulative effect works both ways. So if you're constantly filling your brain and your mindset with positive things that's uplifting, it's motivating you, that's sh uh, showing you there's opportunity everywhere, well, guess what you're going to do? That's going to translate to your actions that you take, the people that you help, and the money that you make. But the opposite is also true. So if you're stuck in a little bit of a, you know, a rut right now, the first thing, and we say this constantly on our show in our coaching uh, business, is definitely go media free. So if you find yourself feeling kind of depressed, use a word, uh, do yourself a huge favor and just completely uh, purge media with the exception of the things that make you that uplift you um, and go this, you know, any the politic, the political environment that's happening um, in the United States right now is, you know, horrible. So do yourself a favor and just ignore it. Just check out of it. If anything important happens, someone's going to tell you. That's right. All right. So, yeah, you can't we talk about being media for all the time because it's so pervasive but also because it's something you can control. So point number seven, schedule and stick to, make sure you use the second part there, schedule and actually stick to a productive and profit-driven daily schedule. PD, Peter Drucker famously said, tell me what you value and I might believe you, but show me your calendar and bank statement and I'll show you what you really value. I think that's a great quote, right? Uh, absolutely. Because it shows what you're putting your uh, intentions towards. And we <laughs> talked about that on the podcast that we did a couple mm -hmm. days ago. We were talking about essentially, you know, follow the greatest investors ever. And one of the tips we were suggesting, we're talking about Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Uh, you know, one of the tips we were suggesting is use monarch money to manage all your money because that's going to give you an, uh, an unemotional snapshot of what's truly happening with your finances. But go back and listen to that past podcast. By the way, this would be a great a point to, you know, great place to remind all of you guys, you can join Premier Coaching right now for free. A lot of you are looking and ready for the direction that you need in this, you know, in this industry right now. And to build on the, uh, the point I was previously making, we're not going to, you're not going to sign up for Premier Coaching and be fire hosed with all these other things that we're trying to coerce you to sign up for because we somehow get in a commission for, you know, you signing up for this CRM or you signing up for this lead generation, all the rest of it. You don't have to be, I don't even, you don't even have to be skeptical about what we're going to teach you to do in Premier Coaching because it's basically this podcast is like 5% of what do you get in Premier Coaching, maybe 3%. And so many of you love this podcast because frankly, I know a lot of you are using this podcast to give you direction in the market. The, the Premier Coaching is the next level. It is going to take what you're learning, you know, the education and the motivation. It's going to help you to get into action with this information at a higher level. And you can join Premier Coaching for free. And, you know, Premier Coaching is, you can either go to premiercoaching.com or scroll down below and click the link to join now. It is free for the first 30 days but that does include a daily semi-private coaching call and really an unbelievable amount of content, scripts, objection handlers, all the things that you need. So just go to premiercoaching.com or scroll down below and click the link to join Premier Coaching. 
Perfect. So to go to the next level, again, point number seven was schedule and stick to a productive and profit-driven daily schedule. How you allocate your time and resources reflects your true priorities and productivity. One of the things I do with my coaching clients is ask them to show me their Google Calendar. And if it's just kind of sketch and blank and we'll just, you know, get to an appointment when we feel like it and it doesn't have scheduled lead generation, lead follow-up presentations, well, maybe that's part of the issue. You're unlikely to do what you intend to do if you haven't scheduled proactive lead generation. If you don't have a reminder to follow up on all of your leads daily, you're going to forget to pursue them. If you don't have an open house scheduled, you're not likely to be doing one this weekend. And don't hit the save for later or snooze on your notifications once you've got them in your calendar. Do the task, be consistent, and see the results. You know, I whenever I present this point, I always think about Duolingo. And you and I were joking about that, and Zoe was talking about it too, because it's got such uh, relentless accountability. It has a larger icon that you set up on, Tell me on your phone. Is. Okay, so Duolingo is a language learning uh, app. You can sign up for whatever language. I've got French, Spanish, and Italian on mine. It's always got Japanese and Spanish on hers. And here's you can the choose. here's the secret to a long, happy marriage: is have your wife be a super nerd that loves to learn <laughs> all these things, and you never have to learn them. So when we're walking around Puerto Rico where we live, and someone only speaks Spanish, guess who now speaks fairly fluent Spanish, and guess who doesn't? <laughs> so I just hit my. And I'm still counting on Zoe to make up the gaps. Exactly. So I just hit my ask Julie, and sure enough, she's going to know how to speak to them in Spanish. I know. I'm trying. We'll see how Allo- we do in your Allowing me to perpetuate my lazy language yeah. skills. Well, but, but here's the point is that one of the reasons that it, my Spanish skills are improving, and I can, you know, have a sentence or two in the other languages, is because Duolingo is a great accountability tool. It sends you reminders. It, it's little owl gets progressively more dramatic if you don't practice every day. Um, it even sends you emails to practice. I've got an, an alarm set up. I, I try to practice, you know, a couple times a day. But if you don't have that, if you don't have a little Duolingo bird hunting you down, you've got to set up and have accountability yourself. You can do that with alarms. You can do that with your Google Calendar. What's well, a schedule, basically, at it's the end of the day? Yeah, That's have, right. have a schedule where you're doing the same. And follow it. Right. And have a schedule where you're doing the same thing every day. And now, the, again, we're gonna, you and I are going to you know, veer off in a different direction, but it is worth mentioning. The problem is, is what a lot of you are scheduling is not really productive. You're scheduling, you're doing work theater. You're not actually doing the real work of real estate. So let me define that for you. Consider adopting this definition for yourself. If the activity you're about to do or consider doing is not going to put you in a position to make a, uh, a, you know, get paid in the next 90 days or less, don't do it. There it is. That would be what I would suggest. And I'll give you, I'll even give you an advanced version of that. If you're not putting yourself in a position to hear the word no, not from your spouse or your partner or your dog or your kid, if you're not putting yourself in a uh, position to hear the word no from a buying, uh, you know, a real estate client or a potential one, you're not doing your job and you didn't work that day. You have to be willing to accept the fact that no is the desired result when you know, if you're not hearing no, you're not pushing yourself. If you're not hearing no, you're not actually asking questions where they could also say yes. If you're not hearing no, you're not essentially doing the real work of real estate, which is looking for buyers and sellers, and in doing so, asking questions uh, that will result in the word no is a sign you're on the right path. But these are the t- this is the mindset that you should all be adopting because what most of you do- will do in your schedules is you're going to do, I'm going to do five Twitter posts. I'm going to do five Facebook posts. I'm going to go on this Facebook group and I'm going to read this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to an office meeting. I'm going to attend an online event. That is not work. That is work theater. Work Real work is having real conversations with decision-making adults about buying and selling real estate where they could hypothetically say no to you. That's real work of real estate. Schedule that every single day and the accumulation effect from doing that work is more profound than you could possibly imagine. We talked about the um, compounding, uh, in, you know, compounding yeah. wealth, compounding interest rates mm-hmm. and all the rest of it the other day. This is the same thing. It's exactly the same thing, the accumulation effect. Well, it's the accumulation effect is your skill set gets bigger, mm-hmm. your calluses get, you know, a little bit thicker, so sure. the, the, the nose just roll off your back. But also... The, your confidence improves and then your transactional volume improves and then your you know your income and your wealth and your all of it but it does not happen unless you're actually finally willing to you know set aside the work theater and really get to work and just remember that if what you're considering doing after you listen to our podcast today is not going to put money in your pocket in the next 90 days or less don't do it 
Force yourself to do the real work of real estate. Remember that FISBO you drove by when you were taking mm -hmm. uh, your kid to school today? That would be a prospective listing. That's probably at least two or three transactions. And yet you think you're going to go and basically make a bunch of TikTok videos hoping somebody's going to call you. You keep on driving by that FISBO every day. That FISBO sign is a, you know, the unrepresented owner sign is merely a help wanted sign. Are you going to offer them help? You should, because chances are that's your next paycheck. Yeah, here's a little accountability tool I like to uh, remind them of. I wonder which two, three, four, or five people in your database that you protect with your soul, right? Which four or five people have a for sale by owner sign in their yard right now? <laughs> and when are you going to drive by when another agent lists those and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe my past client listed with somebody else. Don't let that happen to you. That's got to be you being proactive and speaking with that person. And also, you can't complain that there's no phone number. Well, what are you talking about, Julie? I just, I mail them postcards every week. Sure. I, I see them, you know, at the kids' soccer team, but you never talk to them about real estate. Exactly. You're just assuming they're going to do business with you. What you're not realizing is there's 10 other agents mailing stuff that's just as compelling as yours. And, oh yeah, see all those other kids or other, other parents at the uh, kids' soccer game, well, half of them have real estate licenses That's probably as well. right. And they're also romancing that prospective seller. Oh, and by the way, the, the gal that you know cuts her hair, the prospective seller's hair, she just got a real estate license as well. Oh, did I mention that his, you know, the husband's uncle Bob has a real estate license? And also the guy he golfs with. You guys get the point. <laughs> yeah. Have the calls, make the conversation, make the business, do the deals. Exactly. All right. Number eight, practice the previous seven skills. Remember, this was a two-part series. Practice them weekly and build upon your skills and habits. This is why it's called your real estate practice. You're supposed to be practicing. The more you practice, the more success you get faster. Practice is not a one-time dabble. It's how you build your business through honing your skills and being proactive. Now, our job is to educate you, motivate you, and get you into action. Your job is to be in action. So for more help and support from our highly skilled and experienced coaches, just sign up for Premier Coaching today for free. Thank you for keeping this the number one daily listen to podcast in the world. We're consistently like top 16 of a podcast in the business section under careers. And we certainly appreciate all of your support. You know, thousands of you listen to us every single day. Please repay the favor for your free real estate education by giving us a five-star review over in iTunes and a little comment about why you like the podcast. Any support, um, all your support is greatly appreciated. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Oh, by the way, thousands of past podcasts, thousands of past uh, uh, podcasts on YouTube. Go and completely fill your head with information that's going to educate you, motivate you. And as Julie said, now get into action. Have a fantastic day. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.